Welcome today guys to the second episode of my podcast where we're going to be reviewing the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix and all of the incidents that happened during the race. So here I am again with Niblo to go through the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix and Nib, what did you think of the race in terms of excitement I guess? There was absolutely no excitement whatsoever. It was probably the first race in a long, long time where I genuinely thought I was going to fall asleep during the race. I can I can understand you pain them doing the watch along. It was quite hard at times to actually find words to describe what was going on because a lot of the time nothing was going on on track. So yeah, not great, but we will now go through the teams and how they did. First off, Mercedes and Ferrari. Vettel beating Hamilton in a textbook move on the Camel Straight using his ERS battery, no doubt. And from then on, Nib, Vettel kind of destroyed Hamilton in the race, especially in the second stint. Yeah, Vettel was certainly on song at this weekend at Spa, at least during the race. He was having a lot of problems out of Stabilo in practice and qualifying, but he rectified that during the race and his pace over Hamilton in the first stint was very good. And then in the second stint, Hamilton turned down his engine and Vettel just breezed away. Yeah, it was in the second stint. It was total domination. I think Hamilton did turn his power unit down, but I think Ferrari had the pace anyway. They were very fast once they got those fresh tyres on. And once they covered off Mercedes, the race was over from that perspective, but with Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen, Bottas, we knew he was going to have a penalty coming into the race. He did hit Sorokin at turn one, but I think, Nib, finishing fourth, there was nothing really he could do more than that because, you know, Kimi and Daniel Ricciardo were out of the race, so, you know, the best thing he could do was finish in P P4. I think if Kimi and Daniel had finished the race, I think P6 would have been the best he could have done. So, yeah, I guess a good drive, do you think? Uh, yeah, Bottas just needed what he was doing. I would like to point out that Ricardo was ahead of Bottas before <laughs> he pitted. Uh, but it was quite a comical crash by Bottas into the back of the Williams into turn one. I don't really know what he was doing. Uh, he just went straight in the back of Sorotkin. It was, or Stroll, whichever one. It was quite interesting, but he recovered and got the job done for P4. I think with that crash on the first lap, I think he might have been distracted what, with what was going on to the left of him with that massive accident. He might have been looking kind of to the left and then not have realised that there was a car right in front of him. That's kind of what it seemed like to me, but who knows what was actually... Uh, going through his head and what he was looking at at the time. But for his Finnish compatriot, Kimi Raikkonen, what a a horrible weekend in terms of the meaningful stuff in practice and in Q1 and Q2. I thought Kimi was going to get pole position and win the race. But once we got to Q3, he did not have enough fuel to do his final run in Q3 where the track was at its best. And then in the race... More bad luck. Daniel Ricciardo hitting the back of him. And after that, he couldn't really do anything. He had too much damage to his car. Do you think, Nib, if Kimi had not had the issues he had, do you think he would have been at least second for a Ferrari 1-2 or maybe won the race? Yeah, Kimi definitely would have at least finished second this weekend. He His pace was superb all weekend, quicker than Vettel who was struggling a little bit in practice and qualifying. And then when it comes down to Q3, he just gets bad luck every time, it seems, or he makes a mistake. I feel really sorry for Kimi, and then nothing Kimi could do at turn one after Ricardo got hit in the back and forced into Kimi's rear end, where he got a bit of rear end damage, and then the DRS kept staying open, which forced him to retire. Yeah, very sad for Kimi, and hopefully he doesn't get any bad luck in Monza, but knowing him, he probably will. But with the Red Bull, with one of their cars, Max Verstappen, even though it was, you know, disaster for them in Q3 in qualifying, 
I think with Verstappen, Red Bull got the best out of their car. But I just want to ask you, Nib, what do you think about Daniel Ricciardo this weekend? Because I have seen a lot of people kind of criticising him and saying he doesn't want to be there. Um, he's not really interested anymore. He can't wait to go to Renault. He has been quite far at Spa off of Verstappen's pace. What did you think of his performance? I didn't think it was that great, but he wasn't you know, massively terrible. But again, he didn't really have any pace, did he? Well, to those people who were saying that, uh, well, yeah, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> he wants to be doing the best he possibly can be with the time remaining at Red Bull. Red Bull's given him so much in his career and he wants to finish off there well. It's not like he was half a second off the step in this weekend. He was two tenths. Like, for most drivers, that's the usual gap between Seb and Kimi. And because Ricardo's usually a lot closer to Max and vice versa, and then they're like, oh, two, three tenths. Oh, but he was behind by half a second in Silverstone qualifying. No one beat an eye. It's only now because he's moved to Renault that everyone's making a fuss about it. So it's an absolute pile of nonsense, really. I have noticed on Twitter especially that since Ricardo has decided to go to Renault, not only from people on Twitter, but also from people at Red Bull like Max Verstappen, kind of questioning what Daniel has done and maybe criticising him, you could argue. I've never really seen this before for Ricardo. Normally, everyone is praising him and loving him because he's such a great guy and, of course, a great racing driver. So, yeah, we'll see how... We'll see how that goes for Ricardo in the remaining races. But he does, I think, have a grid penalty for the Italian Grand Prix. So it's not going to get any better. But for Max Verstappen, he did all he could getting, you know, P3, pulling off brilliant overtakes on the two Force Indias. And Nib, with how far Red Bull are off of Mercedes and Ferrari, and especially in a straight line, that was all he could do. Yeah, Max just did what he needed to do this weekend and well got past the force in the force indias eventually and got the p3 for the very happy uh max verstappen fans at the belgium grand prix but uh you said you mentioned the engine power there i love how lewis hamilton after the race was complaining about engine power <laughs> in the mercedes <laughs> like are you kidding me why are you complaining Try driving a Red Bull and then complain, mate. Like, try put him in what Alonso's been going through for four or five years now. I think it's just quite ridiculous what Hamilton said after the race. I understand. Um, I think basically that's because he's been used to having the best engines in F1, not only since 2014, but let's be honest, since 2007 when he came into F1, has any of the cars that he's driven ever been poor in a straight line? No, not really. And Ricardo, for example, and Verstappen, their cars have never really had good straight line speed. Maybe you could say the Toro Rosso for Ricardo in 2013 was good. But I think Hamilton is just so used to having a car that is good in a straight line. That's why he's complaining. But it was nice to see Christian Horner um, you know, criticise Lewis for that about that issue. So now we'll go on to the start line crash, that massive crash with Hulkenberg causing the accident and sending Fernando Alonso over the top of Charles Leclerc. And the big headline from this is, did the halo save Leclerc from a, a serious injury or even did it save his life? In my opinion, it saved him at least from an injury. Did it save his life? You know, that is up for debate, but I think... What happened in that accident clearly proved, Nib, that the halo has to be on these cars because it did help Leclerc avoid any kind of injury. You're absolutely spot on with that. Without the halo on there, Leclerc's certainly getting hit by Alonso's right front tyre. If people haven't seen the footage, go and find it. It's on Reddit and it's circulating around Twitter where the halo deflects Alonso's front right tyre which was heading straight for Leclerc's head. And I think we can all be very thankful that for the halo 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I do want to kind of debate this with you. What do you think about Nico Hulkenberg and his punishment? I have seen a lot of people, including people in uh, our Discord server, saying that he should get a race ban. And some people saying that the punishment he got, which is a 10 place grid penalty, you know, fit the crime. I agree with the punishment. Do you think he should have got a race ban? Because there are you know, kind of similarities to the Grosjean crash in 2012. But I think we know why Grosjean got that ban in 2012. It was not only because of that accident. But what do you think? Yeah, I think the penalty that Hulkenberg has got is absolutely fair. And those calling for a race ban kind of forget that the reason Grosjean got the race ban was because he took out championship contenders in that crash in 2012. And sadly, that's the way it was. I think he shouldn't have got a race ban. It probably should have been, I don't know, a quality ban or something like that. But Hulkenberg was very reckless, in my opinion, going into turn one. It almost looked like he was trying to go and take a quality lap into turn one if you watch the onboard. You know, most drivers are cautious into turn one, but there was no caution in the way that Hulkenberg was driving for me, into turn one. So, well, there's only one person that can be blamed, and that's Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, I think Hulkenberg was very reckless in that incident, and he is lucky that he did not cause something that was a lot worse than, you know, it was, because what he did, you know, getting deep onto the brakes like he did was kind of poor driving for a driver that normally doesn't make that kind of mistake, but... Hopefully he will learn for the future. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with part 2 of this podcast. Don't forget as well to join the Chazer HDF on Discord server. A link to that is down in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think about what we discussed in this podcast. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.